Hello and welcome to Talking Defense, Rafael's defense magazine. Every program will be dedicated to a different subject with all relevant experts, data and aspects here in the studio and from around the world. Today, Sky Spotter. With me in the studio are Phil Kravitz, Marketing and Business Development Manager, Alona Mitai, Electro-Optic Early Warning Product Line Manager, both from the Air and C4ISR division at Rafael, and from the US joins us, Colonel Eric Brown, CTO of RSGS. Gentlemen, thank you all for joining me today. Um, Alon, we'll start with you. What exactly is SkySpotter? Thanks, uh, Yoav. Uh, SkySpotter is uh, effectively um, an air surveillance radar, but unlike any other radar, it is based on uh, the technology of um, infrared uh, sensing, meaning electro-optical sensors that are picking up the uh, airborne targets and present them on C2 system. What is it good for? Why do we need it? What um, can it detect that cannot be detected by mm. other means? Traditionally, uh, radars are used uh, for um, um, surveying the sky and uh, uh, finding uh, targets or objects in the sky. However, radars are, um, are not so perfect. Even in daily life, we uh, tend to say that someone or, or an event um, managed to sneak under the radar. So in order to seal those incompletion of the radar, we are using a complementing technology uh, that is based on different physics and offer um, great advantages exactly where the radars might struggle. Kfir, uh, uh, on to you. Uh, if we look from operational perspective, uh, for example, the Israeli army or any other army, how do you deploy such a system? Well, the system has many uh, operational <coughs> performance. For instance, it can passively detect, track, and even uh, bring to a full interception of a jet, enemy jet, that is trying to avoid uh, transmitting radar. The pilot won't know what hit him. He won't uh, have any uh, early alert. Uh, another use for the si operational use for the system is uh, alerting our civilians or uh, troops for incoming uh, shelters, rockets, uh, something that can save lives. So anything which is supposed to be undetectable, stealth, or Indeed. flying very low, for example, cruise missiles. We've seen for recently, in a few occasions, the American forces uh, not being able to intercept cruise missiles being shot by uh, uh, Iranians' proxies, mainly from Yemen towards Saudi Arabia. So such a system can give a solution to s such threats. Certainly. We, we, we've seen... Uh not just in, in Israel, but around the world, and recently in, in uh, uh, increasing frequency, events in which the, the radars are being challenged, and nations, even superpowers, uh, uh, airspace integrity is, is being defied by either very sophisticated low signature targets, or even sometimes crude uh, um, objects such as uh, drones. In order to uh, be able to preserve the, the airspace integrity and, and be able to uh, properly defend uh, the, the territory that we want to defend, radars sometimes are not enough and we need to complement that with uh, uh, EO sensing. So Eric Brown, on to you uh, in the US. Uh, from a global marketing perspective, how do you envision SkySpotter being deployed or used in the United States, for example? Yes, uh, Sky, SkySpotter is a um, very valuable capability to have. Uh, as already stated, um, it reduces the cognitive load for a air traffic controller or a soldier or a sailor who has to constantly uh, view the airspace for intrusions. Uh, any, any country that has a hostile neighbor um, that you need to ensure that your airspace is secure, uh, SkySpotter is, is, is that tool or that capability that you can bring to provide you that early warning that's needed 
and and as you stated as well to also defend against low slow small cruise missiles and counter uas so it's it's a great add to your kit bag when you're trying to defeat uh, the enemy with the use of, of these type of uh, so, uh, threats. So, Eric, could you envision Skyspotter employment in the future to provide early warning for deployed U.S. forces, as we see now in Iraq or Afghanistan, or probably in the future in other places? Oh, oh absolutely. If, if um, you know the infrastructure is there to to support the um, the the deployment or employment of Skyspotter, it's 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 ideal. Um, uh, especially with some of the, the, the technology that's now being employed with uh, the, the groups one through three uh, counter uh, UASs. This would be ideal to give a, a soldier with a mobile device to counter that, uh, that type of uh, UAS uh, early warning before it even gets uh, in, into a area of, of doing any type of damage. Yes, so uh, Alon, back to you. Uh, um, speaking of uh, the sky spotter, it's, uh, you're speaking of intercepting, but it's, it's quite a tool of gathering intelligence as well. It is. Um, sky spotter is based on uh, infrared uh, sensors, which are passive and cannot be detected um, by the enemy. Therefore, not only we can intercept them, as uh, Kfir just uh, mentioned, uh, with, without the, for the, the adversary uh, being aware of, of the fact that uh, they are being tracked, uh, we can also gather valuable information about the enemy's intentions and capabilities and analyze their uh, uh, performance or patterns of life while they are still uh, remain oblivious to the fact that they, they are being tracked. Feel how complicated it is, it is to deploy that system, the sky spotter. How many people are needed? How expensive it is? Uh, it's easy to deploy, uh, and it's also uh, a movable uh, platform. It can go on tracks or uh, be dragged by a, a wagon, a control wagon, and uh, it takes. Maybe Alon can help me, but uh, mm -hmm. approximately. L less than a, a half an hour yeah. and you have the system uh, deployed. Uh, certainly uh, it would be um, optimal for a fixed location, but it can uh, uh, relocate or redeploy it with uh, maneuvering uh, forces. We say that sky spotter is more than just a sensor because sensors, there are many companies that are manufacturing sensors. I think that the core of the system the thousands of hours uh, that was uh, invested in the algorithm behind the sensor, that's what makes the sky spotter unique. Yes, Eric, you spoke of uh, the U.S. Uh, Army, U.S. forces. Do you see it, uh, uh, such a system used by other forces globally as well? Yes, and just to kind of piggyback off a statement, the uh, sky spider, the the um, algorithms is is really the, the crown jewel. Uh, it's still again, it's, it's more than the sensor. Um, all that intelligence and and surveillance of the sky is is uh, captured, and that's what makes uh, this capability so powerful. Yes. Um, and 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 to to answer your your question directly, uh, this would be ideal for areas like. Uh, South Korea, North Korea, uh, where you have uh, a neighbor who is constantly trying to uh, probe mm -hmm. and surveil your, your airspace. So uh, I can see it in uh, potentially uh, Korea area, uh, in the Pacific, um, potentially Ukraine area. Some yes. of those areas where you, you have a lot of um, movement in the airspace to, to um, uh, gather intelligence on, on your neighbor. Interesting. Eric Brown from the U.S., uh, Alon Amita and Kfir Kravitz here in Tel Aviv. Thank you very much all for joining me. And that's all from us today. We'll be back uh, shortly with another uh, edition of Talking Defense. Until then, stay safe and stay tuned. Bye-bye.